Hello and welcome to this video that accompanies lecture 1 from the module Fundamentals of Programming 1. In this video um, we will cover a number of different topics that will allow us to begin to expand and build more complicated Java programs. We'll cover the idea of program blocks which we touched on in the last video and in particular um, how blocks can be nested within one another and how to look after our indentation. We'll um, speak about the idea of statement execution order and we'll see that Java programs are executed from top to bottom. And we'll also cover the idea of putting comments in our program. We'll cover the idea of controlling the cursor using different print statements. And then we'll get into the more important aspects of this lecture which are arithmetic expressions we'll deal with simple data types for the moment we'll just introduce two new data types int and double and then we'll see how we can declare variables and assign variables um, values using the assignment operator so the first thing that we will look at is the idea of program blocks and we saw in our last video that the hello world program that we wrote really contains two program blocks. So there's the outer block that contains the program name and the, and the keyword class. And then there's this inner block, the main program block where all of our program statements are. So there are two program blocks in this little hello world program. And the program blocks are really defined by the curly brackets. So we've got a set of curly brackets for the outer um, program block and a set of curly brackets for the inner program block. Now in Java um, we're not limited to two program blocks. We can actually nest um, program blocks within one another. So uh, just to illustrate this I'm going to write a little Java program called nested blocks. So I'm going to say public class nested blocks and I put in my brackets and make sure I close the bracket and then hit return and then I'm going to say public void main or public static void main string args open my bracket, make sure I put in my close bracket and then hit return in between them. So right now I've got two program blocks. I've got the outer program block that encompasses everything and then I have this inner program block. So I can put my um, commands or you know instructions to my Java program in here. So I could say system.out.println and I could say you know first block. So if I save this program and then what I want to do uh, in my uh, command window is compile the program. So I'll say java c oops nested blocks dot java and then I'll say java nested blocks to run the program. So I get a system out that just says first block. Okay, so that's pretty much like the hello world program except it's just called something different here and um, I just have my system output statement saying first block. Well, I can actually create another program block by just using the brackets. So I can say open bracket, close bracket and in here I could say system.out.println and I could say second block. So this has created another program block in here. These two brackets represent that program block and this program block is in the main block. And I could actually go further inside that, nest another program block in here. And in this program block, I could put another system.out.print, oops, spelled print wrong, uh, print ln and I could say third block. So I can create as many program blocks as I like 
and I can nest program blocks inside of one another. So each of these system commands, so that's system command or system.out command is in the main program block. And then this one is in the second block in that main block. And then this one's in the third block within that main block. So I can nest the program blocks inside of one another. So let's save that program and I'll compile it again out here on the command line and then run it again. And this time I should see the output first block, second block, third block. And I see that there. You'll notice that the output of the program just prints um, the commands that are in the first block and then it executes the second block. So it outputs second block and then it outputs third block. So each of these program blocks are nested within one another and each of them have a system command. Now, I don't have to obviously nest each command like this. I'm just illustrating that program blocks can be nested inside of one another. And it is a common practice within Java to make sure that you indent each block within the program. So for example, the outer block, the bracket starts here, and then this bracket closes that outer block. And then of course we have a bracket for the main, and then this bracket closes the main. And you'll notice that the end brackets, the close brackets, are kept in line, in vertical alignment with the opening line of that program block. So each block effectively is kept in line with the brackets. So we tend to keep those brackets in line with one another so that we can very easily see program blocks. Just by looking at the program, we now know that there are a number of program blocks nested within, within the one program. Uh, and we do that by tabbing each block in. So it's only really when we create a new program block that we tab um, the code inwards. So I can actually um, turn on the uh, tab characters in my editor here, and you'll be able to see that each of these blocks is tabbed in once, and then this one's tabbed in twice. Each one of these little arrow symbols stands for a tab character. So you'll see um, the indentation actually tabbed in, and you see the number of tabs in my editor. Now, some editors allow you to see those characters, those tab characters, and some editors don't. But it is important to make sure that you um, actually format and indent your program neatly so that when someone is reading the code, it's very easy to see um, each program block. So I'm going to hide the invisible characters again. Okay, so that, that is our program blocks and uh, we've seen that we can nest program blocks. Now this isn't necessary all of the time. Um, if I wanted to just, for example, print three things um, one after the other, I wouldn't need those blocks. So for example, um, if I remove all of these blocks, uh, I could just say, um, I could have a command that just said first output and I can copy and paste that down and create another one and another one so I could just have second output and then third output okay so I don't need the program blocks they were just illustrating that we can have nested blocks but I can have three system dot out commands in a row if you like or one after the other and um, all followed by a semicolon because each instruction needs to be ended with a semicolon so if I run this you'll see that I get exactly the same output if I recompile the program and run the program again you see I get the same output so um, this, the blocks didn't make any difference to the actual output of the program but um, they did make a difference to how the source file looked. Okay, 
So moving on to the next topic, and um, we've covered that the indentation usually use the tab key to indent program blocks. And you should get used to doing that because it makes your code far more readable. And in some editors, as I said, you can actually visualize those tab characters so that you can see how far in each block is indented. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about uh, going through the lecture notes, picking out the main things from this uh, lecture one is the idea of statement execution. So in Java, uh, in general, statements in our program are executed in a top-down manner. That is, execution starts at the um, at the top of the program or at the top of the main section in the program, and the first instruction gets executed, followed by the second, followed by the third. And remember, each instruction in the main uh, program block is separated with a semicolon. So each instruction is taken in order and executed. So if we were to take something like this shopping list, for example, um, we'll see that uh, we can have a system out command. I'll just put one in here. I've copied and pasted it from previous just to save a bit of time. So I could say my shopping list okay and again i can copy and paste that line and uh, put the next line in so you'll see if i maybe just kind of make this look make this shopping list look a bit pretty and um, put some asterisks in there and then i could put my first item on my shopping list let's say item one bread okay so if I save this program and I run it from the command line, so if I say Java C, and this time my program is called Shopping List. So I'll say Java C Shopping List of Java. And I'll run it with the Java command. And you'll see that I get the output, my shopping list. So that was the first system out command that got executed, followed by these this line of asterisk symbols. So that was the second command that got executed when the program ran, followed by bread. And that was the third system out that got executed. And of course, I continue continue on this way by adding more commands on to my program i could say item two and let's make that milk for example and i could save my program so i can go to file and save and then if i recompile on the command line so java c shopping list dot java and run my program again with the java command shopping list you see this time now i have my shopping list the asterisk followed by the first item on my list which is bread followed by the second item on my list which is milk and again the program is executing in a top-down manner so the first instruction gets executed followed by the second third and fourth and so on so java essentially is a top-down style language it executes the first command and goes through all of the rest of them until it reaches the end until it reaches the last command and then it has nothing left to do and the program finishes so we get an output that is in the same order as the system dot out statements that we have in our program so statement execution order in java is top down okay so let's move on and have a look at the next topic. So the next topic is the idea of um, adding program comments to our programs. So comments in programs are lines within the source code that are not executed. They're lines that are essentially ignored. They're literally just like notes in the source code. Um, we can use them for multiple um, purposes. We can, for example, 
Um, if I wanted to say maybe document this shopping list example, I could, for example, put a multi-line comment in. So multi-line comments are started with a forward slash and an asterisk, and then I close the multi-line comment with an asterisk and another um, forward slash. And in here, I can put, say, for example, if I wanted to maybe document the program, I could say who the author was. So the author is me. Um, maybe the date that it was created, say the 18th of the 10th, 2019. Um, I could say, maybe give it a description or a purpose. I could say description um, and I'll just put in my shopping list. Okay, so you get the idea. I can I can put in various different comments or pieces of information about the program. Now these lines in my source file never get executed. They're not executable lines of code. They're merely comments or notes that I can put in in order to document the program and make the purpose of the program clearer to someone who's reading it. So this is an example of a multi-line comment. So, for example, I could just say, uh, you know, this is a multi-line comment. Okay, I also can put in um, a single line comments. So, a single line comment. So, if I want to put a single line comment in here, um, just make a space and make a line above it. And I can just use a double forward slash and I could say this is a single line comment. Okay, so I can put a single line comment in there. So maybe I could say um, begin shopping list. Okay, so that's a single line comment. I can also, if I want, I can put in comments at the end of a line. So the single line comment could also go after this semicolon here, for example, or after any um, of the semicolons that I have in my program. But uh, let's put one in here at the end. I could say, for example, end of list. Okay, so you can put a comment in at the end of a line like this, or you can put a comment in on a new line like this, a single line comments, or you can do multi-line comments anywhere in the program. So I could have a multi-line comment at the top there, or I could even create a multi-line comment here if I wanted to. Um, I could say, um, this is the main program block, for example, or something like that. Um, so I can put multi-line comments in anywhere I want to as well. Okay, and, and I can put tabs or anything within that multi-line comment block. So if I save my program, and uh, let's run it, let's compile it out here again, Java C, um, shopping list dot Java. You'll see it compiles, and when I run it, well, I guess what's going to happen? Um, nothing, oh. Uh, oh, of course, it's not called shopping, it's called shopping list. So nothing amazing is going to happen. Let me just do that again so you can see it. Nothing is Nothing different is going to happen. It just prints the shopping list. I don't get any different output. But that's because comments in a program are not executable. They're just little notes that we put in to make the code more readable. The other thing that comments can be used for is we can temporarily remove a line of code from our program. Say, for example, if we wanted to test something. So let me show you how you might do that. I'm going to put in another line uh, into my shopping list. I'm going to say um, system.out and I'll say item tree. And I'll say, uh, let's say I need to buy some butter. Okay, so you can see that the new system.out.println with item 3 on my shopping list is there. So let's save the program. And again, I will run the program. I'll recompile it. And I will run the program. 
and you'll see that we get a new shopping list and item three on the shopping list is butter. Let's say, for example, if I wanted to temporarily remove that item from my shopping list. Now, I don't want to remove the line of code. I don't want to delete that line of code completely, but I just want to remove it, kind of get rid of it for a minute just to see what my shopping list might look like. So I can put the single line common symbols forward slash forward slash in front of this line of code. And what that will do is that will treat that now as a comment. So if I save my program and again, I'll recompile using Java C and run my program again using Java. And you'll see now that item three is missing from my shopping list. That's because it has been commented out over here. I can very easily uh, re-include that line of code by just getting rid of the comment symbols and now it's back in save my program and let's have a look and see does it reappear so recompile the program using java c i'm going to execute the program using java and you'll see now again that our item number three butter is back in our program so comments um, are very useful you should get used to using them and you should make a habit of commenting your code and um, particularly when your programs get a little bit more difficult and um, you you should comment the code to make sure that when you ba look back at your program and um, you understand what the program is doing so the comments are for yourself and also for someone else reading your program like me uh, I'll be correcting your code and looking at your code to assess it so the comments will help another reader of your program understand what you're trying to achieve. Okay, moving on to the next topic then. Um, we have some examples of comments there in our slides. The next example is controlling the cursor. Okay, so um, I have a little program kind of prepared already for this, just a template so it can uh, get going quickly. So controlling the cursor, really we are talking about three different kinds of system.out.print uh, commands. So for example, if I use the command system.out.print, and this time I'm going to leave out the ln, and what I'm going to do is just print a message to the screen. So I'm going to say item one. And then on the next line, I'm going to have another system dot out dot print. Again, I'm going to omit the ln. And this time I'm going to print the word item and two. OK, now if I save and run this program, so I'll go back out to my command prompt window and I say Java C cursor control is the name of this program. And I'm going to run the program, cursor, control. Okay, look at what has happened here. I have item one, and then what has happened is it has continued to print right uh, after where it left off the printing the character one, uh, and it's printed item two. So you'll see the print command prints just on its own, does not and um, move the character or move the cursor to the next line. So if you use a print command, um, that will just print whatever you have in your quotes to the screen and the cursor will be left in the next available position on the screen. And then when you go and print something else afterwards, it will print in the next available position. So it doesn't create any spaces it doesn't um, bring the cursor to a new line or anything like that. OK, so uh, how about if I use um, print ln then in the first one? So if I say instead of saying print, what about if I say print ln? So print ln, what that does is it prints the message that I have in my quotation symbols and then it moves the cursor to the next line okay so it prints the message and then moves the cursor down to the next line 
So let's try that with a print LN. So save it and I'll recompile over here. Java C uh, followed by the Java command. And this time you'll see, okay, we've got item one. Ah, now look, it's uh, moved the cursor down to the next line and we have item two, which you'll see my command prompt now is um, on the same line as well. Okay, how do I move that down? Well, it's just a matter of saying, okay, instead of having a print here, let's change that to a print LN as well. All right, save our program. And again, I'll recompile over here in my terminal window, Java C, followed by the Java command. And now we have item one, a new line, item two, and then a new line, and then the command prompt of my terminal window um, follows after the output of my program. So we have a couple of different options. We've got a system uh, dot out dot print. So I can have a print. I can have a print ln. And also, what about if I just wanted to print a new line, but I didn't want to print any message? So print ln in those cases we were printing a message. Well, I can actually use a different um, variation of the system.out.print command. So I can say system.out.print and I can put in the ln, but I don't have to put in a message. I can just use this as a way to um, print a new line. Okay. So this variation of the system.out.println doesn't print a message, it just simply prints a new line. So I could put one there, and I could also put one after item two, and I can save that and recompile over here, cursor control, and I can run my program. And again, you see I get item one and a new line, item two, and a new line, and then a new line, and my command prompt. So I have a number of different variations that I can use. Print, print ln. I can use print ln with a message, uh, or print ln with no message, just to print a new line. So that is controlling the cursor. Okay. So the next uh, thing that I want to go through in this particular lecture is the idea of arithmetic expressions. And again, I have a little program prepared for this. So with arithmetic expressions, normally in mathematics, we're used to writing down arithmetic expressions in, in mathematical notation. But in Java, we must use a form of arithmetic expressions which are in linear form. The linear form means that we can't have expressions like this, for example, where we have a line underneath and uh, you know a, a division operation that happens like this. We can't express uh, it like that in our Java program. So we need to write the expressions in linear form. So we can see, for example, um, in in this particular on this particular slide, we can see that. 3 plus 4 multiplied by 5, all divided by 7. In linear form, what that would look like is 3 plus 4 multiplied by 5 in brackets, and the multiplication symbol is the asterisk symbol, and then the division symbol, this line that we have here, that line that we have in mathematics that we normally write fractions using, well, that division symbol is the forward slash symbol here. So, for example, if I wanted to output the result of 3 plus 4 multiplied by 5 divided by 7, I can just use a system out uh, command to do that. Okay, so I'm going to use a println this time. And um, actually, I'm going to use a print command. And I'm going to say the message that I want to write out is, I'm going to write down the expression here. So I'll say 3 plus 4 multiplied by 5 divided by 7 equals. So this command is literally going to print the sum 
to the screen, that text. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another system.out. Okay, so another system.out command. This time I'm going to make it a print ln. So it's going to print and then do a new line. Now this time I'm going to not I'm not going to use um, a set of inverted uh, quotes or sorry a set of quotation symbols. I'm going to get rid of that. And this time I'm actually just going to type in without any quote symbols whatsoever. I'm just going to type in three plus four multiplied by five in brackets divided by seven. Okay, now just be careful here because the println statement takes a bracket. So we have an open bracket for that and a closed bracket. And then I have another set of inner brackets for the three plus four multiplied by five bit and then my divided by seven bit. Okay, so what this is going to do, this system out is going to take this expression and it's literally going to evaluate that expression. It's going to um, multiply four by five and add three, and then it's going to divide by seven. So when I run this program, let me save it first, and then back to my command window over here, and I will compile the program. So this is called um, arithmetic expressions. And I'll compile it and then um, run it using the Java C. Okay, so you'll see that I get the output 3 plus 4 multiplied by 5 all divided by 7 equals 3. Okay, so this part of the expression is coming from the system uh, dot out this part in the quotes. So that's a literal message, just like a message that we printed before. It's going to print that message to the screen. And the uh, tree, the value tree, is coming from this system out. Okay, so this system out is actually evaluating that expression. So when Java goes to execute this line of code, it's going to see this is an expression. It's going to see that it's an arithmetic expression and it's going to evaluate it. It's going to execute that expression, just like typing it into a calculator and hitting the equal symbol. When Java executes this line of code, it will take that expression and actually carry out the maths, carry out the arithmetic, and it will output the answer here. So it replaces all of this with the answer to that particular piece of arithmetic, which in this case is tree. So that's where the tree appears from in our output. This line of code, because we don't have quotation marks around it, okay, it's not going to literally print that. It's going to see that as an expression and it's going to evaluate the expression and print the result. Whereas in this one, it's surrounded by quotation marks so it's seen as a literal message, and in that case, it literally prints that to the screen. And I get the, the nice, neat output over here in my program output because I had a print statement here. So the answer then, when it gets printed, is printed directly after the sum. And then I have a print ln as the second instruction in my program and the uh, print ln forces the output then to the to the next line and of course i can have all sorts of complicated uh, arith arithmetic expressions in my program um, for example the second one over here on our slide let's put that one in um, so for example that is um what is it it is um 5 multiplied by 7 minus 8 all divided by um, 4 multiplied by 67 minus 3 multiplied by 9. Hopefully I have my brackets right there. Um, so we've got open bracket, uh, open bracket, 
close bracket that's okay and two open brackets and two okay so looks like I've got an extra one there so if I take that expression and in the second system out let's put that in there and this time I'll save my program and we'll compile and run it again over here in the command window oh I didn't compile it so let me compile it again and run it and this time you'll get the output zero okay so um, it's just evaluated that expression and whatever the value of that expression is it just outputs it okay so that's how we can use arithmetic expressions and um, we can output the values of arithmetic expressions using uh, our system uh, dot out dot print command and um, just remember as well that in java multiplication is the asterisk symbol and division is the forward slash symbol and we need to write any arithmetic expressions in linear form of course the rules uh, of precedence apply um, in our uh, arithmetic expressions and we've spoken about that in our lecture and we had some examples as well of um, those rules of precedence and how they work and we have examples of those in the lecture as well okay and we've seen how we can use the system.out command um, to print arithmetic expressions so we have an example of that also in our lecture notes okay so the next thing we want to talk about is uh, simple data types and variables now um, variables are really crucially important to us in programming and we're going to introduce the idea of data types and to do that we'll introduce two very basic data types first the idea of an integer and the idea of a double so um, when we're writing computer programs it's not really helpful uh, or, or you know it's not um, really flexible to have to type in all of these arithmetic expressions every time we want to calculate something it would be much nicer if we could assign values to variables in our programs and um, use those variables in any calculations that our program might do so um, we introduce the idea of a double and an int and these data types um, can store different types of numbers that's why they're called data types so an integer for example well an integer stores all the minus and positive numbers including zero but an integer in our programming language actually has an upper limit so the upper limit is given here this is the oops this is the upper limit for um, an integer in um, in Java two one four seven four eight three six four seven that's the biggest number that integer data type can store a double on the other hand a double is uh, capable of storing a decimal point number and of course we can have all sorts of different examples of decimal point numbers um, and the upper limit on the double data type in Java is 10 to the power of 308 so it is quite a large number um, we uh, don't really have to worry about um, the upper limit of a decimal or a double type in Java so some examples then of where you might use these data types well let's say for example you wanted to store someone's age well you might store that as an int and um, the year for example well the year is never uh, 2010 and a half it's always a whole number so you could use an integer to do that the month for example is never September 0.5 or something like that so it's always a whole number so you could use an int to store that a day number for, exa for example would be the same however a double which can store a decimal point number would be more suitable to storing things like a salary a distance a height a weight or if you wanted to store the value of pi for example 3.14 you would use the type double so 
How do we actually use these data types? Well, the first thing that we need to do is actually declare variables of those data types. So in our slides, we can see we have some examples of the idea of an age might have the value 10, year might have the value 2019, uh, length might have the value 2.5, and pi, for example, uh, would have the value 3.14. So the way we declare variables is we specify the type that the variable is, either an int or a double, and then we give our variable a name. So when we're naming variables, there are some rules around that that I'll mention in a minute. But on the slide there, you can see some examples of an int x, int year, and double salary, and double weight. So we specify the type and then we give the variable a name. And you'll also see that each variable declaration is ended in a semicolon as well. Some invalid variable names, for example, well, variable names can't start with a number and there cannot be spaces in variable names. And in Java, we usually use the convention of naming the first part of the variable name with a lowercase and then any subsequent words within the variable name would have an uppercase letter. So for example, gross salary has a lowercase g and an uppercase s, distinguishing the different words in that variable name. Underscores can also be used in variable names if we want to. So the assignment statement in Java is how we actually give variables names. So it's no use being able to declare a variable without also being able to assign it some value. So the assignment statement, which is the equal symbol in Java, is used to give a variable a value. So the way we use this is we use the variable name that we've declared equals, and on the right-hand side of the equals can be some expression or an actual literal value. And we'll see that in a second when we go to write some code. So um, we can uh, write a little example here. I have a little program prepared already uh, called assignment. So what we can do is we can declare some variables first of all. So I'll put in a little comment and I'll say declare some variables. Okay, so I'll put in int maybe int, uh, let's say int year. Okay, so int year, and I'll also say maybe double um, salary. Okay, um, well actually let's say double length. Okay, so that's how we declare the variables. We say, okay, specify the type, int in this case, and then the variable name. And in this case, the type is double, and the variable name is length. So if I wanted to say um, the idea of a gross salary, I could say double, and then I could have gross salary. Okay, so that would be a good variable name. Uh, length is a good variable name because it's quite descriptive and year is a good variable name because it's quite descriptive. So we should try and use variable names that kind of describe the values that they're going to store. For example, I can't put a space in here. So if I put a space in between this variable name, that's invalid. I'm going to get an error if I do that. I could replace that space with an underscore symbol and that's valid. So gross underscore salary. Um, but rather than do that, in Java, the convention is to use this kind of notation where we have a lowercase g and then an uppercase s for the second word or any subsequent words in the variable name. Okay, so if I save this program and I compile it over here in my command line window, so I'll say Java C and the name of this program is assignment.java and then I'll execute it assignment um, well what happens well nothing happens because all I've done is declared some variables so you'll see I don't get any output over here in my command window or in my terminal window 
because the program isn't actually doing anything. These are instructions to the program, but they don't have any output. They don't cause the program to do anything that I would notice. So let's move on from that and let's use these variables. Okay, well, let's give the year variable a value. So how do I do that? Well, I can say year equals 2019, and then I can put in a semicolon. So I use the variable name, and then I use the assignment statement with the assignment operator, which is an equal symbol, and then I give it a value. Now this value that I, that I give year can be a literal value like that, like literally 2019. Or for example, when I'm assigning a value to a variable, I, I could use an expression. So for example, um, let's say I'll put in a little comment here, give year, or let's say not give, assign year a value. And then what I'll do is I'll say assign length a value. So remember, these are comments in my program. They don't execute. And I can say length equals, well, I could use an expression, for example, on this side. I don't need to give it a literal value. I could say length equals 100 multiplied by 5.5, for example. Okay. And let's say I'll assign gross salary a value. So assign gross salary a value. And I'll say gross salary equals, um, let's say 25,450.9. So I'll give that a literal value over here. Okay. Or I could say, um, maybe uh, I could say, well, it might be someone's hourly rate multiplied by maybe the amount of hours that they work. They might work 40 hours or something like that. Okay, so again, it can be an expression. I can have a calculation on this side, on the right-hand side of the assignment. So in that case, Java will evaluate that expression. It will multiply 9.8 by 40 and then it will assign that value to gross salary and in this case for length as well it's going to multiply 5.5 by 100 it will get that value and it will assign it to the length variable and in this case for year well I'm just giving year a literal value the value 2019 so it gets that value 2019 and it assigns it to the variable year. Okay, again, let's compile that program. So I'll save it and recompile over here in my terminal window. So I'll compile it and run it, and we'll see what happens. Oh, okay, nothing happens because, well, I've declared my variables. I have assigned them some values, but I haven't done anything with those variables. So why don't we print those variables to the screen? Why don't we use our system out commands and print the variables to the screen? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say print. Um, I'll just tighten this code up a little bit. I'll just get rid of those spaces there. So, okay, I'll say print, um, print year. So I say system dot out dot print and I'll say year equals and then I'll say system dot out dot print ln and this time instead of printing a literal message I'm just going to put the name of the variable that I want to print to screen inside the brackets here inside these brackets so I'll just put year so in the same way we actually could put a, an arithmetic expression in here in between the brackets we can just put the name of a variable and the system dot out dot print command will just output the value that that variable has so um i'll print the year and i'll also i'm going to copy that code and just change it about a bit i'll print um the length for example um, so I'll change this code instead of saying year, I'll say length equals, and then instead of printing the variable year, 
I'll print length and then I'm going to copy this code again uh, and I'll print out gross salary so again I'll just copy that down and print out gross salary okay so gross salary equals and then of course I have to change the variable name here I'll say gross salary okay save this code and then again go over to my command window and I'll compile hopefully I have no errors and run the program and this time we get some output okay let's have a look and see what we're getting as our output we're getting year equals 2019 okay where did that come from well the year equals this piece of output came from this system out and this literal message that we printed as screen year equals the 2019 value that we see on the screen here well that came from our variable year when we did the system.out.println and year as the output well the variable year if you remember back up here in this part of our program we said year equals 2019 so that's where that 2019 is coming from in our output when we print the variable year to the screen it doesn't print the word year it prints the value stored in our variable year similarly when we print length equals to the screen well where's that coming from that's coming from this system out that print ln message and again you see the literal message that we want to print to the screen is length equals the 550.0 where's that coming from well that's coming from the fact that we're printing the length variable to the screen in this system dot out dot print ln statement so we print the variable length and what value does that have well we assigned length equal to 100 multiplied by 5.5 .5, which is 550.0 and that's where the 550.0 comes from it comes from the variable length and of course we assigned the variable length the value of 100 multiplied by 5.5 .5, which gets um, calculated when the program executes and it calculates the 550.0 and that's where that output comes from the gross salary well gross salary equals that message that we see on the screen comes from this system dot out dot print ln and the literal message gross salary gets printed our gross salary equals gets printed to the screen and the value 392.0 where did that come from well gross salary the variable that we declared is equal to or becomes equal to 9.8 multiplied by 40 so 9.8 9 multiplied by 40 gets evaluated when the program executes that value of 392 gets assigned to our gross salary variable because we're using the assignment operator here equals so the value of 392 gets assigned to gross salary and then this system dot out dot print ln command um, outputs the gross salary variable of course it doesn't output the word literally gross salary because there's no quotes around it so it sees this as an expression or a variable name and it prints the value stored in the gross salary variable okay so there's quite a lot to take in there um, which you'll need to practice a little bit um, but that is uh, really it for uh, lecture one and again we will build on the techniques that we've covered in this lecture uh, in our next lecture to make even more interesting and complicated programs.